The scripture today is Acts 17, verses 24 through 28. The God who made the world and everything in it, the one who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is God served by human hands, as though God needed anything, since God gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, God made all peoples to inhabit the whole earth, and God allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the pieces, places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps fumble about and find the Lord. Though indeed God is not far from each one of us, for in God we live and move and have our being. As even some of our own poets have said, for me too, for we too are God's offspring. Word God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hope you know is that I'm a fellow pilgrim in the journey of faith. I've been called to lead in particular ways, but it doesn't mean that I have it all figured out or that I get it all right. And the disciplines are a way where I get to practice too. And full disclosure, this week's is hard for me. It requires a certain settledness that does not exist in my spirit. So I have to focus and I have to work for it. But I'm going to share some of the things that I know and believe about contemplative prayer and some of the things that have worked well for me. So contemplative prayer is a practice of being with God. It's super simple, right? You just be with God. You could just sit with God, which is something that I can manage, right? I could sit pretty much anywhere, anytime, any place. My knees are still good enough. I can even squat if I need to, and there's not a chair available. But the being with God, how many of us have ease in that? I want to hang out with God and Jesus, and he, God's just right there. Oh, in the back. We got it all the way in the balcony. The kids got it going on. So you can take some lessons from some of our students later on. The rest of us, apparently the more ears you pack on, the more challenging it becomes. Because most of us want to know in some sort of tangible form where God is. There, you know, like, can I touch God? Can I feel God? Can I know that God is there? Is there a voice there every time, any time? And when I hear the voice, am I crazy voicing or is it the God voice? We struggle with sort of the tangible nature of it. Um, and for people like me, I don't s stay still very well. I know you're shocked. Um, I like to do things. I like to check them off my list. I like to be accomplished. And so this notion of just sort of being still and present with God is one that takes work. But a couple of things have helped me over the years. Um, the first is spending time with my father. And I'll explain it in this way. Um, my parents were very different personalities. My mother is, was gregarious, a talker. She could talk to anybody. She would talk to anybody. She could talk about anything. And she could explain anything. And you, you wanted to be really intentional when you asked her a question. Because the answer that you got would be like this. <laughs> like, Mom, I really just wanted the Reader's Digest version. Right? But that was not my mother. My mother was the talker. My father was the opposite, is the opposite. And uh, he's a ponderer, very thoughtful. And his mother used to say about him, I think John believes he has a certain quota of words for his lifetime. <laughs> and he doesn't know how many, and he doesn't want to run out. So he uses them very sparingly. And growing up, I would ask my father a question, and if it was a thinking question, not just a, like, quick, this is where it is, right? Not where's the hammer, but, you know, a sort of philosophical question. I would ask the question, I 
And then I would grow impatient, and so I would ask a different question, thinking maybe he just wasn't going to ask answer the first one. And then I think maybe he doesn't have an answer for that one either. So then I asked the next one, each time interrupting his train of thought. And he had to sort of put all the things together before he was going to speak. He was very much, is very much thoughtful before he speaks. So I finally had to practice and learn. I could ask the question and wait. Don't ask another question, just wait. And sort of quintessential example of how this transpired or how this sort of played out in our lives was, uh, I don't know, somewhere in my 20s, early 20s, I'm going to seminary in Atlanta. We're driving across country together. It's just the two of us. It's a 36 hour long trip. 32 hours of it in silence. This is my father, right? He's just not a talker. If it had been my mother, you would have been lucky to get 30, I mean, you know, four hours not talking. Um, but 32 out of 36 hours, he just didn't talk. And I would ask these questions now in a car as an adult, a philosophical question, a theological question, right? God, Dad, what do you think God is calling you to do next? He just retired. He's put the window down. For some fresh air, of course, but it also sort of impedes conversation. So we would just sit with the window down 20, 30 minutes until he was ready to ask, answer my question, um, which was all really good practice for just sitting and hanging out with God. I got lots of things to say. But contemplative prayer isn't that. Contemplative prayer is being present with the holy. It's a practice of patience and a practice of quiet. It's not intercession where we say all the things. It's not confession or repentance. It's being quiet with the divine. For some of us, it's so easy, and some of us, we really have to think about it. And sometimes we ask God one of those big questions, and it's like God rolls down the window, and it's just waiting for the answer, right? Where is it? How do I know, God? What are you going to tell me? I can't even hear you. But to practice contemplative prayer is much like I talked about with the kids. You have to sort of care for it in a way that recognizes that it's sort of fragile, almost even like holding a bubble. If you move too much, if you disquiet it too much, you'll disrupt it. And so if you're trying to practice contemplative prayer, what I would recommend is finding a comfortable spot. Now, that could be your favorite armchair. It could be um, a place on the patio. It could be on the couch. Imagine it as if you're inviting a friend to hang out, to just be together. Where would you sit comfortably? How might you do that? And for me, uh, a different story is I was six or seven, first or second grade, and we'd gone to some friend's house, my parents' friends, and I don't remember what we did. I don't remember why we were there. What I remember is that they had an enormous teddy bear. I was six. It's probably about this tall. Um, but to my six-year-old mind and my memory, really, until like five years ago when I saw a picture, that bear was just huge. But for my six-year-old self, I could sit in its lap, and it just sort of fell around me and hugged me and held me, and it was soft, and it was cushy, and it was snuggly, and it was comfortable. For me, when I imagine sort of that space of sitting with God... I think of that big bear. Can I just sit in God's lap and God just sort of falls around me and embraces me and it's comfortable and it's safe? My love language is physical affection. So being held in the arms of God is something that comes very easily in my mind. And so that's where I imagine myself just sort of being held by God, being quiet with the space. working really hard not to fill it with my words <laughs> and just being present. And it's a practice. 
right? And, and those who practice it often sometimes say, well, then God speaks in a particular way. God might give you a word or a phrase or a pit of scripture that can come. For a lot of us, it's just sitting still. And it's helpful to find that comfortable space and then say, Holy Spirit, come and sit with me. And if you have a monkey mind like I do, and uh, this morning when we were practicing up at Omi Gardens, you could hear the ambulance going and you could hear the traffic across the bridge and up and down the highway. And my mind just sort of twirls to all those things. If you're like me and you have a monkey mind, just say, this is my time to sit and be still with God. And then there's traffic again. Okay, in the busyness of life, with all that's coming and going, this is my time to sit and be still with God. If you're a beginner, you might just put a minute on your time clock. If you've never done it before, a minute will feel really, really long. If you've done it a time in before, you might go to five minutes. You might go to 10 minutes. Some of you were super practiced. You could push into 20. Um, and there's a couple other variations within the study guide that you might find helpful. But those are sort of my practices that help me create that space. And it's just sort of creating that rhythm of, I want to hang out with God. Well, how do I know that God is here? Well, invite God. And we trust that the scripture says... And find that the Lord is not far from each one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being. May we find that the Lord is not far from each one of us. For we live and move and have our being. So, we're going to practice. Not forever. I promise it'll end this morning, right? So, Get comfortable, sort of however that needs to be. Put your feet on the floor. Take a breath in. Say, God, come and sit with me in this time. Amen. As you go forth from this place, may you be filled with more patience than I have so that you can sit with the divine. May you courageously invite God in. May you carve the spaces throughout each day of the week and just practice being present, knowing you are fully loved just as you are in that space with the one who chose you and chooses you day in and day out. May you go in peace and the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.